Alright, quick precursor to the video, you may have seen this on Twitter already, but I recorded this originally and it for some reason just connected to my laptop mic instead of my actual mic, and it sounded like this. Welcome to Enter the Unknown. My name is FJ and we're back today for the fourth episode of our Pokemon Emerald Random Card Challenge. So I ended up cutting a battle out which will go into the start of the next episode because my voice was kind of shot and I just wanted to make it a bit of a shorter recording. Alright, I think that's everything. Here's the video. Welcome to Enter the Unknown. My name is FJ and we're back today for the fourth episode of our Pokemon Emerald Random Card Challenge. Last time out we had a couple of tough gym battles with Flannery and Norman so we're picking up now just outside of Fortree City. After knocking off all of Team Aqua at the Weather Institute we have another rival battle before we can move into the Treehouse Village. For this one, Maze put together a team of three, so that's how many cards we need to draw. We're going to be using the team of Machoke, Marowak, and Magnemite. This is the final mandatory rival battle, the final of three? Pokemon Emerald is so weird. Anyway, this is an above average team for this challenge. We've also got some good type matchups, so I don't think we'll have much trouble here. Let's have a look at the movesets. Tano the Marowak's up first at level 29 with the moves Headbutt, Leer, Focus Energy, and Bone Morang. Also at 29, we've got Omoplata the Machoke, and his movesets made up of Karate Chomp, Seismic Toss, Foresight, and Revenge. Finally, we've got Neo the Magnemite at 31, with Spark, Supersonic, Sonic Boom, and Thunder Wave. I'm happy enough with all of that. I really don't think there's much chance of us losing here. Let's get into it. May leads off with Slugma, and we start things out with Marowak. Tano's just playing around with the Fire Slug, though. She whips a couple of bone meringues around Slugma's head while May calls for Harden, but even with the raised defense, the fire type stands no chance. When Marowak takes aim, bone meringue scores a direct hit, blowing Slugma away easily. May calls on Lombre next, so we recall Tano and send in Magnemite. A fake out aim from Marowak connects with Neo, but it's not very effective. Unfazed by the hit, Magnemite's able to set itself and send a spark of electricity right at Lombre. It's a critical hit which one-shots the Water Grass type, leaving May with only one. Her final Pokemon is her Evolved Starter. No matter who you choose, she'll only have a second stage Pokemon here. In fact, you never get to see Mei with a fully evolved starter in Ruby, Sapphire, or Emerald, which is just kind of bizarre. Anyway, Mei's got Grovile here, and Magnemite leaves him paralyzed and confused before returning to its ball. Macho comes in to complete the trio, but Grovile snaps out of confusion and gets him close to strike with Leaf Blade. It's another critical hit, and Machoke is badly injured. With Grovile in close and paralyzed, he does manage to shake things up with a seismic toss, but ignoring the paralysis altogether, Maze Ace finishes things off with another Leaf Blade. We have to bring Marowak back in, which is dangerous with the grass weakness, but it's our best chance of ending things quickly. Tano grabs Grovile's arms and connects with a powerful headbutt. The grass type is noticeably shaken and flinches, allowing another headbutt to land, ending the battle. May did at least manage to take down one of our team members, which is honestly more than I expected over here. Okay, taking down May opens up Fortree City to us, so the next battle on our radar is the gym battle with Winona. For the first time in this series, we're going to be in a 5 on 5 battle, which gives us a lot of options for good Pokemon, but just as many potential bad team members. Alright, time to draw our team. In the Fortree gym battle, we're going to be using the team of Shelder, Poliwhirl, Mankey, Tangela, and Ponyta. That could make things interesting. We do have a couple of team members who are weak to flying types and no ice rock or electric, but we can still get a few super effective moves. Let's run through the team quickly. Dill the Shelter is up first at level 29, and her moveset's made up of Aurora Beam, Supersonic, Withdraw, and Surf. Next up, we've got Kibi the Poliwhirl, also at 29, and she's equipped with Surf, Hypnosis, Ice Beam, and Strength. That's the Ice Beam TM from the abandoned ship, so hopefully it's not more needed later. Ilska the Mankey's one level higher than Dill and Kibi, and he's got Low Kick, Leer, Karate Chop, and Strength. Socks the Tangela gets another one level bump, and his moves are Mega Drain, Growth, Poison Powder, and Vine Whip. Lastly, we have Firestorm the Ponyta at level 33, and her moveset features Overheat, Tail Whip, Ember, and Stomp. We've gone big on TMs, using up two of our best, so here's hoping it pays off. Let's give this a try. Winona leads off with Swablu, and we send out Shelder first. Aurora Beam doesn't do too much damage, but the Fortree Gym Leader's primary strategy seems to be using Mirror Move. As Dill's using a super effective attack and Swablu's sending back a not very effective move, we get a pretty easy win to start the battle. Winona sends in Tropi a second, and we recall Dill to send out Ponyta. Expecting Shelder to be on the other end of it, Tropius takes in Light to charge up his Solar Beam. Firestorm misses Overheat, so Solar Beam connects, but as it's hitting Ponyta, it's really not too bad. On the second attempt, Ponyta's overheat fills the gym with a blazing inferno that absolutely incinerates Tropius. After Winona sends out Pelipper, we recall Firestorm and send Dill back into battle. 
Just about everything goes against Shelda with Protect and Supersonic messing things up and Pelipper ends up getting the knockout. We send in Tangela next and it's basically just a race between Mega Drain and Aerial Ace. Sox is making much faster progress thanks to the healing, so Winona uses a Hyper Potion and then moves on to Supersonic. Even after Winona's stalling tactics, Tangela still comes out on top, leaving the 4-Tree Gym Leader with only two. Her penultimate Pokemon is Skarmory, and although we consider switching, I ultimately decided to just let Sox play things out. It doesn't take long for Skarmory to eliminate the confused mass of vines with Aerial Ace, but Tangela does at least deal a small bit of damage with Mega Drain. We go back out to Ponyta, who once again sets the already smoking Gym Aflame with Overheat. The Steel Bird cannot tolerate the heat and faints, taking Winona down to one. Altaria is sent in and we switch Firestorm out yet again for Ilska. Earthquake does more damage to what's left of the 4-Tree Gym, but Mankey actually manages to live through the hit. Unfortunately, Ilska's speed isn't sufficient to get a hit in and Altaria finishes him off with Dragon Breath. For approximately the 17th time in this battle, we send in Firestorm because there's probably a small bit more damage to do here. Overheat burns up more of the indoor battlefield, which is at this point just a pile of smoke and debris. Altaria resists the attack so she barely even notices the flames, but another earthquake causes the gym to collapse completely. We climb out of the rubble with Winona and Altaria dodges the falling roof, but Ponyta is left behind. This is becoming gradually more disastrous for the city of Fortree. Luckily for them, Firestorm has been knocked out so the tree houses should be safe. Poliwhirl joins the battle for the first time and puts Altaria to sleep with Hypnosis. As we're in a one-on-one, -on -one, I really didn't want to risk being attacked so that needed to connect. Kibi's first Ice Beam takes Altaria below half health, and the second one takes the dragon down. For a second there, I thought we were going to lose, but Poliwhirl came in clutch with the Hypnosis. Before we end up on the hook for the damages, we should probably leave 4-Tree and never come back. There's plenty to do before we reach the next important battle, so after visiting Lily Cove, we head for the slopes of Mount Chimney. On the Jagged Pass, we find the Magma Hideout, which is where we'll battle Maxi for the second time. The Team Magma Leader is pretty consistent with his team, so we'll need to draw another team of three for this one. The only real difference from our last battle with him is that his levels have improved and where he used to have a Zubat, he now has Crobat. Alright, let's draw a brand new trio for this one. We're going to be using Clefairy, Pikachu, and Weezing for our second face-off with Maxi. That's a decent enough team, although it's not ideally suited to take on the Team Magma Leader. Camerupt could definitely cause some problems, but Weezing's Levitate does at least give us some protection from Earthquake. Anyway, let's have a look at what moves we'll be using. Nishida the Pikachu is at level 38 with the moves Quick Attack, Double Team, Strength, and Thunderbolt. Diaxa the Clefairy is level lower at 37 and she's got Shockwave, Moonlight, Cosmic Power, and Metronome. Finally, we've got Kova the Weezing at level 39 and his moveset's made up of Smog, Self Destruct, Sludge, and Smokescreen. I didn't have a massive amount to work with here, so hopefully this will be enough. Let's give it a go. Maxi leads off with Mydiana and we start out with Pikachu. Intimidate doesn't really have any effect here because we're focused on special attacks, so Thunderbolt takes Mightyena below half right away. On top of that, it leaves the Dark type paralyzed, so Nishida's in control from the off. Mightyena's scary face is sort of a wasted turn, but before Pikachu can attack again, Maxi uses a Super Potion. That just means he's recovering while Nishida sends two more Thunderbolts crashing into him. That gives us a very easy lead with Pikachu completely untouched. Maxi wisely calls on camera up next, but it also gives us an easy switch. Knowing that an Earthquake's very likely coming up, we recall Pikachu and send in Weezing. The cave floor is ruined, but that does not matter to Kova, who blinds Camera up with Smoke Screen. After further filling the Magma Hideout with smoke, Weezing starts attacking with Sludge. The Fire-type briefly finds his bearings and charges at Kova with Takedown. Sludge then poisons Camera up, and it seems like Weezing's got this one in the bag, but Maxi breaks out another Super Potion. Even with that, all the prior work has Kova in control. Sludge combines with poison damage to tear through camera up, while all of the accuracy drops from Smokescreen keep Weezing mostly safe. After connecting with a single takedown, camera up faints and leaves Maxi with only his Crobat. Kova spends a few turns refilling the cave with smoke and then returns to his ball before Crobat can earn the knockout. Clefairy comes in and she's immediately struck by a wing attack. A fairly pathetic super effective shockwave barely phases Crobat who cracks Diaxa with another wing attack leaving her in red health. Luckily, a critical hit on Clefairy's second shockwave takes Crobat into red health too, and now that Maxi's out of super potions, there's nothing he can do about it. We recall Clefairy to keep the whole team standing and send Pikachu back out. Air Cutter does knock Nishida back, but Wing Attack misses and that means one final Thunderbolt hands us the win. Maxi's defeated yet again, and now we can leave the Magma Hideout and head back to Lily Cove. I think we're going to call it there for today though, and carry on with the final rival battle next time. We've also got an upcoming gym battle with Tate and Liza, so that'll probably be a bit of a mess. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.